Okay, everyone, we are live. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Uh, please uh, tell me in the chat. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, I hope you uh, enjoyed that uh, episode that I streamed uh, before. Uh, we are going to use that library, the Needle library, today uh, for our uh, cyber security stuff. So, but uh, as I mentioned in the chat, it's uh, not really, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's not really uh, necessary to n know a lot of things about it. Uh, so I will just uh, talk briefly about uh, what it's used for. So basically there is um, a, an opportunity with that library to, in a very easy uh, to use kind of way, uh, be able to run several tasks at the same time. So let's say you have... Uh, two processors in your computer or you have one processor with say eight uh, cores then you can run eight uh, different uh, uh, functions at the exact same time uh, and it doesn't have to alternate between and uh, this is no, not a new idea it's, it's, it's called uh, concurrency but the only way that has been possible before is by using the POSIX threads library, which is very big and very bloated and has a lot of different functions. Uh, with my library, it's very, very easy to make this happen. So uh, the things we're going to code today is... Uh, I will call it a password recovery function. So if you have forgotten your, say, your root password or so to your own machine, then you will be able to use this tool to figure out uh, the password. So it, it's not uh, intended to be used in any malicious kind of way. It's uh, a password recovery function basically it will test uh, all the co different uh, combinations until it will find the correct password and it will use all the cores on your system in order to make that happen uh, Ben's uh, asked a question if uh, it's necessary to use uh, my library. Uh, no, it's not really necessary. You can use uh, the POSIX threads library, uh, but uh, I think it's uh, ve much more difficult to use that one. Uh, also, it's uh, kind of bloated, as, as I said. It's uh, 30,000 uh, uh, lines of code. One, while mine is 300, so I, I have focused on just the core functionality that you need in order to, uh, to do uh, concurrency, several uh, functions running at the exact same time. Uh, you could also do it without concurrency, but then you can only use one core uh, of your processor. All right, before we begin, uh, is it anyone who has any uh, questions about today's project or any general question that you would like to get an answer to? Okay, then we'll uh, start. Uh, I will prepare a couple of things. I need to make sure that my uh, windows are correctly sized. So, let's see. I hope this 
text is uh, big enough uh, and then we'll have the VS code which we'll be using for the coding today and perhaps we need a web browser as well something like this uh, and uh, this uh, stream will be about three hours long but we will have a 20 minute break in the middle and uh, there will be uh, maybe a couple of five minute breaks as well uh, all right so let's begin by logging into my code planet server and starting my screen we can use let's use a new one and i always when i start screen i always do this little bash script in because it's very easy to close the last window and then the entire program uh, exits so I always have one of these windows as this uh, let me just drink a couple of sips of water and then we'll get started And also before we before I forget, let me just uh, send a message to the uh, YouTube community that we are live, so they don't miss out on the stream. One second. Almost done. And there we go. Okay. And uh, as you might know, this is a, a this uh, live stream is a celebration of us almost reaching 10k we're at the 9600 today so we didn't quite make it but almost um, and it's quite remarkable how this uh, channel has grown in such a uh, short amount of time because um, i started this channel in january of this year and uh, it has uh, the last six months it has doubled in the number of subscribers every 30 days for six months so i am very appreciative of you guys and how you enjoy the work i do uh, let's see there's a question in the chat uh, will it only be the password tool or others as well? Well, I have one other project, but uh, let's see how long it takes to do this because I'm. Uh, it might take us three hours just to make this first one, and if so, I wanna save the other uh, as a surprise for the next live stream. You know, but I have to. Uh, security tools in mind uh, okay so let's begin by creating a directory what should we call this um, password recovery and 
let's see, I need to download the library. So I'll do npm install needle needle threads and if you don't want to use uh, npm for the installation maybe you don't have node.js installed you can also grab it from the web if you go to let's see https so make sure that it's HTTPS unless it will not work and it should be re repo and the only thing which is uh, available at the moment is this blue thing here needle and then you can download it as a zip file and you can also go into this and look at the different source code files. Uh, all right. Maybe I should type it in the chat as well so you have all the links available. There we have it. Well, C++ is uh, not really my thing. Uh, I kind of skipped that version. Uh, I know C, of course, and I do also know uh, C-sharp.net. But I, I never really wanted to learn C++ because uh, it wasn't really my cup of tea, so to speak. It's, uh, it's a great language, I'm sure, but uh, I, I like, uh, uh, well, I like the simplicity and the control from the C. Uh, if it's hard, well, it's not really harder to learn than C, uh, but the problem is there is so many different features um, which I don't think you really need because you can do everything in C that you can do in C, in C++ but there is so many different uh, uh, things in uh, C++ so it might take you longer to learn just to memorize all of that stuff. Um, but as I said, C++, I, I'm not really the guy to ask about C++. You can ask me about uh, the, the languages that I do know instead. Uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, C, uh, Haskell, and uh, a couple of others as well. Well, we don't really do classes in that kind of object-oriented way uh, that you do in uh, uh, in pr languages like C++, but uh, you can still work in a kind of object-oriented way if you use a data structure which you pass to every function. Like, uh, I think uh, you usually call it a self-pointer or something like that. So, uh, the only difference is that you don't have any methods. But methods are just functions anyway, so uh, I don't think it's really, uh, really necessary. Uh, yes, I was very sick for 14 days. And uh, I, I am better now, for sure, but I'm still a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, you, you hear my voice. I'm not 100%, but 95, so. Um, and thank you for asking, that's very kind of you. 
Anyhow, let's uh, start this thing, okay? I will, crazy me. Thank you. And thank you, Dante, as well. I feel a lot better than I felt when I was at my worst. Uh, let's see. Password recovery. And, uh, okay, I installed it in the wrong directory. Um, let's do it here instead. Okay. I, I have it installed in the local repository already. <coughs> so, uh, let's do this instead. And then I just compile and do sudo make install. And there we are, go. So now we have it installed. And uh, I will just speak briefly about the library. So it's for concurrency, as I mentioned, and it has very few uh, functions to use, which makes it kind of easy to use. And um, uh, we can, we can, I can show you one example though, how code using this library might look. If we go to npmjs.com and we search for needle threads. Then we get the uh, manual, and as you see, can see, you can use local variables as usual. You can use global variables which are uh, shared by all the threads, and it has multi-core support. Um, and you can use either this uh, spawn multiple which will create uh, four threads if you have four uh, different uh, uh, CPU cores. And you can use this spawn single uh, several times, and then you can create hundreds of threads, or thousands even. I will, Skamji. I, I will try to... Uh, create a um, video every four days. That is my uh, intention anyway. Uh, and thank you. Uh, I don't really understand crazy memes. Uh, suggest uh, what? Okay, so now the library is installed. Let's go into that directory we created. Uh, P PW recovery and as usual I will do my little Linux trick and export the home to the current working directory so I don't have this long uh, prompt all the time And it's quite good, because if you change directory, if you want to check something in, let's say, user include, uh, and you want to go back, then you do just do cd, and you're back in the directory of your project. So, it's a recommended technique. Uh, and I will use the sociopath scp client doesn't quite fit on the screen but 
Um, and if you don't know what this is, it's uh, a program that you can use to upload and download files uh, from a server. And uh, the server doesn't have it doesn't need to have anything special installed on the server. Uh, it works basically against all servers that you can log in remotely to. Uh, and the best thing is that you can go into the directory you just created. Let's see, where is it? PV recovery. And you can open in editor, and that makes that makes uh, uh, it open in VS Code, and then you can remotely edit files on a uh, server. So every time you save, it uploads the file. If you create a new file, it uploads the file, and so on. Uh, this was a little bit too big, I think. We need to find something. Let's see. PV.C. And the, my cat is on the keyboard. Sorry, wait. Look, me for the good man. Sorry, usually I ask my brother to take care of the cat when I do live stream, but he, he's asleep, yeah, unfortunately. Let's see, uh, pv.h. And we will also need a make file, I think. And if I close this one, is this uh, big enough or do you have trouble seeing it on the small screens? Sorry about that. I uh, threw out the cat and uh, closed the door now. Um, okay, Skumji, I'm very glad that you like my content. And I would be very glad if you could tell your friends about the channel as well. So we can grow even bigger. Because if you like the content, probably your friends do too. And that applies to all of you. Okay, so let's begin by creating this make file so we can compile things a little bit easier. Um, and I will speed through this a little bit so we don't use up all the time on explaining the make file. I will, however, do an own episode just about make files in the future. So let's see, we need some kind of flags. And we, let's do O3 and uh, std equals C to X. And, and then some linking flags as well. Uh, and uh, let's see, first thing we're going to compile is pv.c uh, 
Let's see. Let me run CC and we want the flags. C and V. Let's see this source. And when we have a PV dot O, we want the PV which requires PV dot O go O and then we run CC with the flags. So do a clean, which will simply remove all the O files and the PV file as well, and all will run clean, and it will run PV. Something like this. And I need to save those files I created. <coughs> Let's just add a comment for now. And save here. And there they are. Let's see if it compiles. And uh, this was expected. It did create all the object files, or the one object file. It did, however, fail because it doesn't have a main function. But that was intended. So, very clean. All right. Uh, we will be coding C today. Uh, as an answer to the chat. Uh, all right, so let's start coding. Um, where were we? There it is. Okay, so in the inside of here, I will just include the uh, uh, thread library. Needle.h And I will also add my standard list of includes. I always use the same basically and then when I'm done with the program if uh, if I don't need one of them, I will prune them off. I think that's an easier way to work than having to update these all the time. As soon as I introduce a new function call or so. Uh, stdlib.age, I will also have the um, assert.h and it wants to have the r number dot h 
and then we also need to make a definition define GNU source and uh, I'm not sure if I have explained this before but uh, I get the assert function from assert.edge and that's a function which uh, you make an assertion like uh, it's almost like an if statement if this equals that that or similar and if uh, it's not true then the program exits uh, and this works by just uh, including the assert.edge but if you wanted to use assert p error which is a combination of a, with uh, print error and assert then you have to use error number and you have to include this GNU source or it will not find that function definition. Uh, okay, I think this will be enough. Let's add this too, by the way. Uh, And then we will include our pv.h and let's create an in main function and we will probably need some command line arguments so let's add those in right now. having trouble <laughs> finding that on my Mac. I usually code on my PC but uh, it's much easier to stream on the Mac I think. Uh, and let's just print some message so we see that everything compiles. that and let's see if it compiles yes it does and it works okay so what is the um, password that we have forgotten and we need to recover um, let's create a temporary user just so I don't get hacked <laughs> while we are coding this. Isn't there such a thing? and I don't want it to be too easy but I would don't want it to take all day either so let's see hmm. I will type it in another screen so I can copy paste this instead Let's 
let's see. Okay, it looks right. And let's do the same with the shadow. Just to be sure. Okay, so here is the password hash. Very long thing, that must be SHA, right? Let's save this in a comment in the code. Hmm. And in order to encrypt the password on a, a Linux machine, there is a library call which is called is it crypt something like that uh, crypt okay this has changed from before but i think it's this function you give it a clear text uh, password and some setting. And what is the setting? Mm. Okay, it decides about the hashing method. So, and the salt as well. All right, makes sense. I would want an example though. What is five crypt? Okay, let's see if we can use this function. Setting things as well. Or let's see what happens if we leave that blank. So if we say something like this. And then we call crypt with an um, Example password, let's say Apple, and uh, this should be a string. Let's see if we can give it a zero. And Okay, we need to use that settings thing after all. So 
so it should be a structure but it should be used as a string weird thing Perhaps we need to some include as well. I forgot to check. But probably we do. Okay, we need crypt.age and we need to do lcrypt when we compile. So let's go here. And add those things. Crypt dot h and in our make file we will add as ld flags uh, l crypt something like that. So let's create one of these structs. Struct crypt data settings. Let me just check the chat. Uh. Thank you, Manshi. Uh, and uh, how many libs in C total, you mean? Or how many libs are we going to use? <laughs> total, well... Let's find out. We can check how many uh, .h files I have on my machine. Two thousand four hundred and seventy-eight, and this is basically a blank machine. I haven't installed much on it, so quite many. Uh, all right, so let's see. We have input and we have output. 
those should probably be blank when we use a phrase, right? Let's leave them uninitialized. But the setting we need to have, and that is a string. Before it was, was much easier to use this function. You just did crypt and then uh, uh, password and salt. And that was it. But everything needs to change, right? The initial initialized should be set to zero, okay? Zeroing the entire object. There must be an example of how we use the settings field, right? Perhaps we should go into the crypt data man page. No, there is no such thing. Uh, we will have to Google. This is not the same function. Maybe it's still maybe it's still there somewhere. <laughs> Never mind. Well, there's an encrypt as well. But this is probably not a hashing function, it's probably a regular encryption. <laughs> I 
Let's focus on the actual field instead. So we have crypt data and we want the settings. Which one is it? Extract grid data. Settings that we used to encode it. Okay, so this is the output variable. That makes things a little bit easier. Uh, let's just do something like so let's just initialize it to zero and then we run the crypt with a password and then we need to use some casting and I don't remember what it needed uh, const no it's const Well, let's try with it. Let's try it anyway. Okay, let's see what happens. Perhaps the compiler can give us some hints if we are lucky. Okay, let's send the This instead. Let's need to do this as well. Maybe I should spell right as well.
Okay, we're getting closer, I think. Print F cannot convert to a pointer type. Argument A, null, where null, null expected. Extern char crypt, closed char files, steady. Did I miss some semicolon as well? It's difficult to see when it doesn't fit on the screen. I hope you still uh, will be able to uh, uh, see this uh, text even on small screens. Uh, let's see. Person S. Crypt. Apple. Culture star. Settings. Well, set, char, settings, zero, size, subtract, group data. Ah, I missed one of those. Okay. Let's see. Right, so the return value is an extern char crypt. Error cannot convert to a pointer type. Okay, so perhaps it does return one of these structs in, to them. Uh, Let's do out is equal to v struct crypt data, and then we run the crypt function. We send our apple. And sure. Okay, so now it's in the out. And let's try to Let's try to print out something from this structure then. Uh, output. This should work, right? Thank you, Andre. Pingixor, well, we, the function that I plan to use, crypt, has drastically changed since I last uh, used it. And I'm trying to figure out how it should be used, basically. 
because it has a very, very, very weird signature. I have not, never seen anything quite like it. Uh, look at this. So, well, the first thing, the passphrase, that is a regular string, that makes sense. But this second settings thing, if we go to this script data structure, okay, it, maybe it doesn't want the whole thing, but only this. That could make sense, right? So let's do something like Out equal out equal crypt and the password Apple and then the settings but our settings will not be this entire structure but this but what should we put inside of this let's just make it zero out this the first try and this needs to change to As soon as we figure this problem out, the rest will be rather easy. Oh, did I put it in the printf as well? Oh. Okay, fingers crossed. It would be nice to have this problem solved before the break so we can uh, focus on doing the rest afterwards. So, a couple of enters, and then clear, and then make. Settings undeclared. What did I call it? Setting me, okay. Let's do it again. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. To crypt, okay. Thought we put it in the make file. Uh, maybe I didn't include the LD flags. Right.
Okay, it compiled at least. Let's see if it's sag false. No, but we got a rather peculiar output. That's kind of odd. Why? Why would it result in a string of star zero? I need an example of these settings. Let's see, data initialized zero. It seems like most of them are using the crypt r function instead. Maybe we should too. Because that one seems to make a little more sense. So let's do crypt r and what did it want? It needed some salt. So let's use that yen salt function. Prefix count R byte. Or maybe we can just do this. We take the salt from the user we created and use it. So let's see. I think the salt was the first argument. Then we have this and then we have, let's call this settings 
and that should be one of these structures. E like so. Let's remove this one and we can keep this out pointer. Let's just quickly double check that crypt function. So crypt r returns a string and it wants the phrase the setting and the data hmm perhaps this settings thing is just the salt could that be because this is a crypt r function and if we look at this guy's example, he did crypt r password and the salt and the data. It doesn't work though, but we can try. So we need to change places here we need to send the reference I think and here we set the passphrase Well, let's see what it says. Incompatible type, right. We need to send the reference there as well. Okay, it's compiled. Fingers crossed, right? Okay, now it works. Finally, we should have begun with this function, but we learned some things along the way. Anyway, let's see, what time is it? Uh, it's perfect time for the, the 20 minute break. So, um, uh, we'll, we will continue this stream at about uh, 12.45, a little less. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, guys, we are back. And uh, we ha before the break, we did solve the most, uh, uh, well, the biggest problem. So the rest will be rather easy, I think. All we need to do is create a function that generates different passwords and uh, compares them to the uh, password hash to the user we need to recover because this tool is used for recovering your passwords if you have forgotten them nothing else let me just check the chat so let's see Uh, yes, Surajit. The project is, uh, if you have a user on your machine uh, and you have forgotten the password, we are creating a tool which will use 
concurrency, so it will use all the CPU cores at the same time, trying to recover the lost password. And uh, thank you, Andre. And uh, let's see. And uh, about recommending the GPT. Well, GPT can create stuff that has already been written, but it cannot really create stuff that has never been written. And at least using my needle library, this has never been done. So, plus it doesn't really give any good explanations. And I don't recommend using GPT for programming, actually. I think there are much better ways to learn. And uh, I do also know that so some of you doesn't uh, appreciate long sequences of troubleshooting, but I believe that uh, troublesho troubleshooting is the most uh, important thing of uh, learning how to code or being a good coder because no matter who is uh, writing the code um, even if you have been coding for 25 years in the same language uh, you al always will run into problems and the important thing is that you have some kind of um, steps that you do in a, an effective kind of way. It took a while to solve the problem before, but um, we did solve it, and it uh, in a half an hour or so. And I think uh, that is rather okay. And I want to show you how real coding is, because usually uh, the coder who does streams like this have already written the code in advance uh, and rewrites the code again. And then the whole uh, troubleshooting steps uh, disappears. So I think this is a better way, but I understand if you don't. don't. Let me just drink a little water and then we'll begin. All right, so let's make this program then. We need to go into the uh, NPM page because I want to copy a small part of the code from my example program. Let's see, it's uh, needle threads I need those three lines so let's see let's clean this up a little bit too and let's put it here somewhere and we don't need this anymore and this shouldn't be crypt output size anymore this should be uh, size of Crypt data. So 
So let's turn this into a function. Let's call it um, yeah. what should we call it? Uh, let's do char encrypt and we will only take the uh, the password as input so we replace this apple string with the password and we will replace let's do it like this and We'll create the definition for the salt. Like so. out variable and let's just return it like this I think that'll work uh, let's try it out so Password hash will be string calling the encrypt function with let's do bananas. Return zero. Maybe we should call it PW encrypt so it doesn't collide with the crypt library. Something like that. Let's also create some function definitions. So we have a jar password encrypt. And it takes a char pointer as input. And then we have our int main, which takes an int and a char double star. All right, let's see if it still works. And I got disconnected. is the newest one 250 I think yes so make clean make it compiles and okay let's see what we did wrong because we didn't change much, did we? So it takes this char argument, bananas, and the salt. Ah, we need the salt. So, like this. Now it'll work.
Okay, now it works. So now we can encrypt any password with this salt. So what we need to do now is create a function which will generate different passwords like A and B and C and then A, 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 B, A, C, etc. And in this case, uh, because the username is our own, so we re probably remember something about that uh, password. In this case, what we remember is that the password is, let's see, six characters long, and it contains numbers and uh, small letters, lowercase letters. So that is what our program will do. Um, so we will create a definition. Let's call it characters where we list all the characters we want to try. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. Yeah, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And then we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are the different characters we want to try. And hello, Cetric27. Welcome to the chat. And welcome to the street. Okay, so that is the characters. Uh, let's also define the uh, size to be six. Let me just double check that it really is six. All right. So let's call a function which will call um, let's call it generate. So let's see how we will do this in the best possible way. Um, let's give it a first char and then the current state, I think. We should just create a, a big array where we put all the uh, 
all the passwords you want to try. So each thread will have its own array. I think that is the easiest solution. So what this generate will do is just grab the next the next one. So let's see we don't have to give it any arguments then. So let's go, go into our main function. Uh, we'll do something like this. Uh, if argc is less than 2, we want to print to the standard error usage pv and v hash something like this like so and then we return minus one And let's also create another main function. <coughs> uh, it will be like this. This will be the thread main. So each, uh, each thread will launch this function as its main function. And it will take one single argument. And that is an int uh, 16 need. And this is a needle ID. So if you have four different uh, needles, uh, needles being the threads, uh, it, they will have one, two, three, and four. Because it can't be zero. Zero is the main process. Okay, and what do we want to do in here? We, we need that array, so let's see, I think we will assign a variable for each thread where it will have the beginning characters. So let's say thread number uh, one will have a and B, C, D and E, F, G, H, I and so on. So every password which begins with these characters will be handled by that thread. That is the general idea. So how do we do that? We begin by creating four variables and this should be global variables which uh, will be available to the threads so we'll use the let macro to create them and we need let's call them uh, let's just call them this so Like so, and since we'll be using four threads, I will also need some string. Um, now, we don't need to overcomplicate things. 
I think it would be easier just to create them as uh, uh, regular global variables because they don't need to uh, write to them, just read from them and they won't change during the thread's lifetime. So let's do char thread one or like this even let's say we assign 16 bytes for each one two three four Then we will just let's see. Um, we can do a string copy to thread one. And something and no bigger than fifteen. And then I will make four of these, one for each thread. And then we will just do something like this. So uh, a B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, M, O, P, Q, Q, R, S, T. We could have done this in a more elegant kind of way, but sometimes it's the best just to make it work. And then you can make it better looking. Uh, U, V, W, X, Y. C zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. Okay, so this is the beginning letters for each thread. Then we'll create the let's see thread one. So this is the beginning letters. We will also need variables for the actual um, password arrays, right? So let's see. Maybe it's easier just to have one big one and then let the threads check if they should use it or not based on the uh, beginning uh, letters. So let's allocate a, a very big array. So let's see, we will do char and it would be a pointer to pointer and this will be the password list like so and we need to calculate how many possible combinations there will be so let's see 
let's make a function for that. Um, it would be an int, well, let's make it in 32. And let's see. Combinations. So how do we figure this out? Let's see. We have we have all of these, and we need to combine every one. Uh, so it reaches the size six. Uh, so how many do we have? Let's copy this string and let's do print f send s and this and we pipe it to wc dash characters okay so we have thir 36 possible characters then it should be 36 to the power of 6 right um, if I'm mistaken, please tell me in the chat, but I think it should be something like that. So let's see how we can uh, calculate that. We can do something like, um, we can use let x equals to 36 double star and then we echo dollar x okay so these are the different combinations and each and every one will be uh, six characters so let's say a b c d e f and then a null terminator as well so seven bytes each so let's do y equal to this number uh, times seven or maybe it needs a couple a little padding as well so let's do it eight go to uh, y Okay, so let's see how big this number is. Uh, 17. So these would be millions, billion. 17 billion different combinations. Okay. Uh, no not 17 billion combinations it's 17 billion bytes so if we do this divided by this divided by this so this will turn it into kilobytes and this will turn it into megabytes. Uh, right. Wrong syntax. Let's do it in two steps. Like so. So this is a number of kilobytes. This is a number of megabytes. So 16,000 megabytes, almost 16 gigs of memory.
16 gigs of memory. I wonder how much I have on this machine. Uh, let's see, how do I get them to be there? Uh, 8 gigs. Okay, and we have swap space 13. I think we will not be able to do it this way. Let's do another way instead. Or maybe I use a better machine. I'm a little bit sick, yeah, but uh, I'm much, much better than I was uh, before. I'll just take a sip of water. Okay, so we can do, we we cannot do one big uh, array. Should we perhaps create one array at the time, or hmm, because it would would be rather easy just to create a for loop, uh, which will generate those passwords but we need to think about the concurrency that is where the problem lies because it's not you are a little bit limited when you are working with threads um, so let's see i think we'll do this instead Generate. Let's put a char in here. And let's define our needle thread made. And it's an int sixteen. And let's see. I think we will do this instead. Uh, and we need four so we'll do do a two-dimensional array for this instead and then we will do the for loop inside of the thread main Let's create a char with our beginning letters. I don't like these long variable names. Let's do beginning letters instead. And this will point towards uh, thread 
and in here we will do our need minus one because the first thread will be one and the first um, of these variables will begin at zero so that's why um, and we should do it like this instead okay so now each thread will have their beginning letters now we will simply parse through them one at a time we need we need to know the uh, the size so let's do an int 8 size and this will be equal to the int 8 version of the string length of the BL. So now we know how many characters we ha have been assigned and now we can simply do a couple of four nested for loops. So let's see, um, we need some int 16s or 32 maybe and let's call them just the x y z so the first for loop will set x to zero it will loop as long as x is less than the size and increase at every iteration Um, let's create a regular char um, let's call it the active bl and the active bl will be equal to um, thread need minus one and the x so this will basically parse through uh, these characters one at a time And for each of those, we want to create a password that we will try out. So let's see how we will do that. <coughs> Let me just drink a little water. Okay, so how do we generate these letters? We will pick one from this H5, one of these. So first we will take this, then this, then this. means we need a for loop for our y we'll set to 
theorem. Um, since we know that all passwords are six in size, maybe it will be easier if we just make six variables. Let's create shards for those as well. Uh, so XX YY BZ AA BB CC something like that. So here we will have zero and it will loop as long as um, y is less than and we need the string length of the chars so let's say it would be in in number of chores the number of chores is equal to the string length of chores and as long as y is less than number of chores we'll do y plus plus like so and we will set the yy equal to shares using y as the index And then we'll do ne the next for loop. So let's do something like uh, this. And then like so. So how many do we have? We have this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So here we will use Z instead. And Z, Z, and this will be Z, and then we'll do A, this will not be the most good looking way of doing this, but if we want it to be thread safe, and if we want it to be easy enough to code so we can do it on time uh, I think this is the best way actually and then we have the last one which would be C and C and C we'll have C C and C so let's see we have C C C and these we have B B B B B A A A A A and we have Z Z Z 
I think this would work. <clears throat> uh, and inside of this loop, we will also generate the actual password to try. So we need one string for that. Uh, let's call it test password. And, uh, be eight in size. And let's do something like um, test password equals something. And then we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this last one will always be the null terminator. So we just say to zero. And this first one will be active BL. Active BL. And then we will have uh, XYZ. We will have YYZZ. XYZ. And we have A, and B, B, and C, C. And then a couple of these. I think this will work. <clears throat> we can try it out just by printing the passwords to the screen. So we see that we haven't forgotten anything. We print test password. So let's just call this function and we called it thread main and let's say we will be using thread number one in this example. Return zero. Let's see what the compiler says. variable error expected if we return when okay that was only minor errors so inside of main we forgot a semicolon and we never used x x so let's remove that Right, let's see how it works. Compile.
Okay, it seems to be working, right? And let's see what happens. As you can see, every password begins with an A. Um, if we change the thread number to, let's say, 3 instead, As we can see, they begin with a C. So now we have uh, divided all the password space between uh, the threads. The only thing we need to do now is use our encryption function in order to actually try if uh, we have found the right password. So let's go back in here and instead of just printing it to the screen, did we create a variable for that? Mm, no. So let's do char pw and what did we call our encryption? It's p encrypt. So let's set pv equal to uh, pv encrypt and we send the test password and let's begin by printing them out to the screen so we know that it works Alright, so this seems to work exactly as I hoped it would. So instead of printing them to the screen, we want to compare them to our um, actual password. And the easiest way I think will be to have a global variable let's say uh, um, inside of our main function we will simply set that pointer the hash equal to argv1 so we give it at the command line mm. and then we can do string compare So if uh, let's see, we can do like this strcmp. We compare the pw, which is the encrypted hash, uh, and we compare it to the hash. If those are equal, we will do something. Uh, 
And if they're not, we'll just continue on. Uh, maybe we should print something to the screen every now and then so we know uh, how fast things are going. Uh, so let's do a counter as well, how many passwords we have tried. Uh, let's do int 32n before all the loops will set n to 0 and after the comparison we will increase n by 1 and if let's see uh, let's do like uh, when we have tried a thousand passwords uh, we will print a dot to the screen so if uh, let's see if n modulus thousand is equal to zero that means every thousand we will do we need to do two things I think we need to print this dot to the screen and we need to flush the standard out so it doesn't get buffered but prints instantly All right, I think this will work. Um, let's try it one more time before we create the threads and stuff. Uh, let's just take one of these. Let's see how long it takes before we see this dot. There. Okay, so it takes a couple of seconds to uh, print one of these dots. Uh, and then we will have four cores working uh, concurrently. So I think it will be possible to, to uh, recover this password. Maybe not during this stream, but I will keep it running and show you uh, at a later video if it's not fast enough to happen today. Uh, Alright, so let's create the threading stuff. What we need is a global variable which will be accessible from all the threads. Uh, so we use let and this will be the correct password. Let's just call it correct. And let's see. We can make this so if it's zero, we have not found the password. If it's one, we have found the password. So let's do. Um, we use the put macro to assign things to these variables. So correct will be zero at the start. And I want to create one more global variable. 
and this will be the password. So we will we will mem set the password to zero every eight bytes. And when the uh, thread has found the password, it will uh, it will report it back to the main function by doing two things. First, it will copy the uh, into the password. Um, and the PW. Let's see, PW is the encrypted password. We should take the test PD instead. And then we will put into the, uh, what did we call it? Correct, and let's set it to one, and that will make all the other threads uh, finish as well. So let's do it outside here. So if get Correct is non zero. Perhaps we need to cast this unsigned long root. Then we will just do exit zero. And if we reach the end right here, we will also do exit zero. So let's see. We compare the password. If it's the right one, we copy it to the global variable and we edit the thread safe variable by putting a 1 there. I think that will work. The only thing we need to do now, basically, is start the threads. So instead of running thread main, we will do, uh, let's see, spawn multiple and each every one of them would run uh, the thread main function so let's grab this uh, real password hash And first of all, let's see if it can pass. Oh, what did it complain about? The password. Is it a charred double star? Mm -hmm. 
شاید چیلات بی پوینتر Okay, and what's this? Uh, it should be one more argument. So let's see. It's down here. String copy. We should have a maximum of, let's say, seven. And now I think it will compile. Okay. So that's just a warning. Um, right. I need to edit the make file to use uh, the needle library. So. Let's add dash L needle. L needle. And we don't have to worry about that new annoying warning that I got. Because it says that it the output might be truncated. But it won't be because we write up to seven and we only use six. So that's a bad warning. Okay, let's try out our final program. Oh, I forgot to give this. That's weird. It segfaulted even before. Uh, it checked for arguments. That is very weird, actually. Let's see. Let's go to the main function. It's probably something... Okay, it's probably because I do the let before these. So, let's do this instead. And we need to give it inside of quotes, I think. <sighs> ah, <laughs> I forgot to initialize the library. That's why, uh, because before we do let or any of these other uh, things, we need to do, let's see, n init. And we need to specify how many bytes we are going to use as uh, <coughs> these uh, thread safe uh, variables. So let's do 20 kilobytes, which is rather overkill, but it should be good enough. And, and we need to unmap also. So at the end here, we will just do uh, n un init okay now it should work better compiles
and now I think it'll work. It's starting to shreds. Did you learn anything useful today and you want to support this channel? Go to drbirch.com slash support. You can also click the button become a member. Thank you for your support. It's changed here. It's too, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 30 minutes or more troubleshooting because I forgot to put this, <laughs> this uh, exclamation point before the string copy. Well, well, well. So let's remove our print. Keep this one and we can keep this one. Okay, now I think it will work. Fingers crossed. Yes. Let's see if we see one of these dots as well. Okay, guys, it's working, finally. I will let this run, and hopefully I will be able to report back to you that uh, it worked and found the password. Let's see. Sanjay, and as I said, <laughs> Uh, I have forgotten a password to my own machine, so I wrote a password recovery function to be used if you forget your own password. And it seemed to work. And the cool thing about it is it uses up all your CPU cores, so it launches one process per uh, CPU core, and uh, it works uh, concurrently. All right, anyone who has any questions or so before we end the stream? I don't see anything else in the chat, so uh, thank you all for um, uh, watching my stream. We had a lot of troubleshooting to do, but I hope you learned some troubleshooting steps, because that is indeed a valuable uh, skill. Probably the most valuable skill for programmers. Hello Legion. 
and uh, well that's basically all for today uh, thanks for watching thanks for today